In this video, I'm going to show you exactly how to transfer a WordPress website from one host to another, even if you have never done this before, and it should only take you about 10 minutes to do. So this works really well if you have set up a demo site and you need to transfer it and make it live on the same host. If you want to take a website from one host to another, if you want to copy a website locally for testing and development, or any other way that you want to migrate a site from one local location to another. And we're going to be doing this all using the free WordPress duplicator plugin. Now, why this plugin? Well, it has been downloaded on over a million websites and it is really easy to follow. So even if you have never done this before, you're going to be able to follow along with the steps that I have here for you. So if you are ready, we are going to jump on over to the computer for an actual real site transfer so that you can follow step by step along with me. Now, I do want to mention that before you transfer a website, do please make sure that you have a backup of your website. So that way, in case anything happens, you at least have a clean copy of your website that you can fall back on. If you are not sure how to do that, you can literally do that in less than five minutes. I have a tutorial on exactly how to do that step by step. I'll leave a link for that in the description below. All right, that's enough talking. Let's jump on over and get started. All right, so here we have the website that we are going to be transferring over to a new host. So the first thing that we want to do here is head on over to the WordPress dashboard and we'll pop in our username and password. And the first thing that we wanna do now that we're here is we wanna go over to plugins and add new because we need to add the duplicator plugin in order to get this done. So we'll come over here and we'll search for duplicator and it's this first one right here. You'll see it's gonna have over a million installs here and we'll click the install now button. Now that it's installed, click on activate. All right, we are ready to go. So now we're gonna head on over here to the left menu where it says duplicator now and go over to packages. Now your screen should look like this. It should say no packages found. And that is what we need to create here so that we have this package of all of our files, our website, database, everything that we can transfer over to the new host. So we're gonna simply click on create new here. Now, as you can see, Duplicator has come up with an automatic name for you. You can leave it as is, which is what I do, or if you want to, uh, to come up with your own name, then you can pop that in there. You're gonna be able to leave everything else here. Storage is going to show you where exactly they're gonna be storing files here. And if you want to upgrade because you want different locations, you can do that. Otherwise, leave it as is. Now they're gonna be creating for you an archive file, which is going to be a zip file. And they're also going to be creating an installer file here. So this is something where we're just gonna leave the default settings as is, and we're gonna click next. Now, what they're gonna do here is they are going to scan the site just to make sure that you have enough resources to be able to put that file together that you're gonna need in order to transfer the site. So once the scan is done, you'll have a report that looks like this. As you can see, everything is good, everything is checked out. So you are good to go ahead and have your package created. So what we'll do now is click on build. Now, as it's building this package, this may take a moment, but what it's doing is it's compressing all of your files into a zip file and then making a copy of your database so that you have everything you need to send over to the new host. And as I mentioned, you'll have that archive file and an installer file. So we will give this just a moment here. All right, so it has already finished and it only took 23 seconds, not bad at all. And we have our installer and archive file. So what we'll do is we'll click on these individually and it is going to start the download for those. Now that those have downloaded, what we need to do is get these uploaded on the new host. So what we're gonna do is we are going to log in to the cPanel of our new host. Now, if you are going to just transfer this to the same host, then really you're just gonna be going to the file manager on the same host, but in the new directory that you're gonna be placing the file. So we are over here in the cPanel for the new host, and we're gonna click on File Manager. And what we want to do is go into the public HTML folder. Now this hosting package has multiple websites. If this is the only website on your hosting package, what you want to do is if this is an existing site or if you are replacing an old site, 
and you are putting up the newly redesigned site, you're gonna want to delete all of the files here because this is for the old website. Now, it's always a good idea to have a backup of the old website before you delete it, just in case you ever need to reinstall it, you need to look at anything, grab any data, it'll at least be there for you. But because this one has multiple websites, we're gonna go into the individual folder that has been set up. And as you can see, it is empty here. So now what we wanna do is we wanna upload the archive zip file and that installer file. So we'll select those files. So we have those two files right here. We'll go ahead and do the zip file first. And while that's uploading, we'll grab the other file. And we'll give that just a moment to finish uploading the larger zip file. Now, while this is uploading, what we're gonna do is we're gonna pop back over to our cPanel here, because what we need to do is set up a new database. Now, if you've never done this and you're like, whoa, this sounds scary, can't do this, it's very simple and it's gonna walk you right through this. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go down and we're gonna look for this section called databases, which you can see here. And we're gonna look for this one, the MySQL database wizard. And the reason we want this one is if you're not familiar with how to do this, it is going to walk you through the process. So now what we need to do is create a database here. Now the first thing that I like to do is grab a notepad, make sure to open this up here, and we're going to copy everything that we're doing. So we have a username, so I'm going to copy that username into my notepad here, and we're going to click on next step. Now we need to create a database user. So we'll pop in any username here. And we wanna make sure that we are copying this down. This should actually be database name. And we'll do now username. And the next thing we are going to need to note down is the password. So what I like to do is just go ahead and let them generate the password for us here. We can select advanced options and that way we can make sure that the website is really secure, the database is really secure, and we can have them generate a password for us that is as long as possible. So I'll go ahead and copy that and use that password. So I'm gonna note that down here real quick and create the user. Now, one thing that I want to note here is that if you are on the same host, you're using the same host, you're just transferring, let's say a demo site, and you're gonna make it live now. What you wanna do it is go in, delete all the files, and then go into the databases, remove the old database, and remove the old database user so you can create a new one here. So now here we have the privileges that we're gonna assign to the new user that we just created. So we'll just click on all privileges and we will go to the next step. So now what I wanna do is pop back over here and make sure that the files have been uploaded. If you want to, you can go back to the file manager and you can refresh that and make sure that you have this archive zip file and you also have the installer.php. Now, if you are transferring this within the same hosting package, then you can now just go to the live site. When you do, you're going to see the archive and installer files show up and you can click on installer.php. PHP. Now, if you are transferring to a new host and you have not yet changed the name servers from the old host to the new host, you're going to need to look for your account URL, which you'll find down here. And this you'll be able to simply copy and paste into your browser. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over to a new browser window and I'm gonna pop this in with the installer PHP file here. So now this is what comes up. We are back in Duplicator and as you can see, we have four steps to make this work. So we'll go through here and make sure that everything looks good. And then we will click on the terms and notes here and click on next. So as you can see here, it is extracting the archive files, it's pulling out the database and all the website files to make your site live. So we have to give it a minute or even a few for it to make this happen. 
Now we are on to step number two, which is to install the database. Now you have two options here, which is to connect and remove all data or to create a new database. Now we've already created the new database, so we are going to connect the database. Don't be worried about it saying it's going to remove all data. This is referring to the brand new database that has nothing in it that you just created. Now, if you remember, I had you note down your database name, username, and password. Go ahead and grab that because that is what we're going to be putting in here. Now we're going to come back to host in just a moment. We are going to copy the database name and pop that in here. We're going to copy the username, pop that in here. And lastly, the password. Now for the host, this is saying a local host that is referring to your own computer setup there. So what we're going to do is pop back over to our hosting account and under account details here, we are going to find the website host name, which we'll see right here. And we're going to copy that and we're going to come back and paste that in here. So now that all the information has been inserted here, we need to test the database connection to make sure it actually works. So let's click on that. And as you can see, we have received a passing score. So we are good to go on to the next step and we will click on next. Now it is just going to confirm that we are using the correct database so it doesn't overwrite anything in an existing database that we need. So if again, this is the only domain that you have, the only site you are setting up here, you're gonna be good to go. Otherwise, just double check this real quick according to your notes with the correct database name and username and click OK. So now this brings us to the third of the four steps here, which is to update our data. So if you want to change the name of your title or the URL here, the path where it is being saved, you can do so. Otherwise, click next. And we are on to the final step. So as you can see here, everything looks good. And we can now log into the site here. And we have this checkbox here. It says auto delete installer files after login. Definitely recommend it that you do that. That way it just gets rid of those extra files that you have there. But you can always go back into your file manager and do that manually if you would prefer. So we can click this to log in here. So there we go. Your site has successfully been transferred. You can see that it has gone ahead and removed those extra files for you. And we can pop on over here to the live site and just to make sure that we're good to go. And there you go. It is here. Now that the site has been transferred, I do recommend that you go through it. You just check the pages, make sure all the images look good, click through on some of the links, make sure they're still good. Any forms, test those out. Just check. It never hurts when you are transferring a site just to make sure those things that are important are still there, all still looks good just in case. So there you go. You have successfully transferred a WordPress website from one host to another. Now that it is on a new host, as you can see here, we need to go in and change the DNS settings to make sure that this domain is pointing to the new host. And once that is done, you will see this new site live. So I hope this was super helpful for you. If you have any questions at all about this, you get stuck, you have questions, then just pop those down below in the comments and make sure to subscribe for more tutorials that are coming your way. And I'll catch you in the next one.